Good morning. Uh, pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us back here today and allowing us to get together as a congregation so we can hear a, a message from Brother Scott. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds to accept it and, and help us to understand everything that you want. And we ask you that to please watch over those who can't be with us and hope that we get them back here together with us soon. Um, pray that everything here today, done today is pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name pray. Amen. It is good to be back. Well, I guess I've been here the last two Sundays anyway, but... But uh, it's good the rest of you are back. Um, you know, we don't, don't realize how much we miss each other when we're not here. At least I hope you miss each other when we're not here and able to see each other. 171. When I survey the wondrous cross, go back to the cross of Calvary and see Jesus as he suffered and died on the cross and remember that the reason we partake of these emblems is so that we can remember Christ and what he done for us on the cross of Calvary and why he done it he died on the cross of Calvary for our sins so that we'll be able to have that hope of a home in heaven with him so please let your mind go back to the cross of Calvary and remember that the bread you are about to partake of represents his body and the cup that you are about to partake of represents his blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Dear God, our Lord and Father in heaven, 
We're thankful, Father, for your son, and we're thankful, Father, for being able to assemble around this table to remember your son and what he had done for us. We pray, Father, that you would bless this bread and bless each one of us as we partake of it and help us to remember your son and what he's done for us. For this prayer we'd ask in Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, our Lord and Father in heaven, we continue to ask your blessings upon this cup, the fruit of the vine. We pray, Father, that you would bless it and help us to remember that this blood of your Son represents, this cup, the fruit of the vine, represents the blood of your Son, and that is what cleanses us of our sins. And we ask you, Father, that you would help us to always keep this in mind. For this prayer we'd ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you didn't drop your money in the basket on the way in this morning, you can do it on your way out. Or if you don't have it with you, you can bring it up at a different time. Uh, the money that you give that is how we support the work of the church here at Somerset. So remember that your offering to God is what carries on the work here at Somerset and around this community and around the world as far as that goes because we send money, you know, to several different places. So if you would, bow with me. Dear God, our Lord and Father in heaven, we pray that you would help us to be able to give and give as we've been prospered and give so that you would be pleased with what we give, dear Heavenly Father, and that it will help support your work around Somerset and around the country. For this prayer we'd ask in Jesus' name, amen. Wonderful words of life. Three zero eight. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me mind the beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life, generous to the loving part. Wonderful words of life, all so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life, all burden and peace to all, wonderful words of life, Jesus the Holy Savior, sanctified forever, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words. Wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Hmm. 
Hello, hello. I think I'm ready to preach. <laughs> All sorts of things to do. Bring up Bibles, bring up song books, taking off masks, putting on microphone. If you saw last week's uh, lesson, the service, you saw last week I wore this microphone, and you got to see just how many times this thing shifted. Uh, and so we tried last week to make sure it's molded to my ear now. Uh, that's why I didn't have it on. Uh, before service and now... It should stay. I can't shake my head too much, but it should stay. It is good to be here. As it has been said, thankful for Andy of leading the opening prayer to see his family, to see Akeem here this morning as well. And as Mike pointed out, to see all of you here today. It's truly a wonderful thing. I was happy to be back last week from Indiana being able to see a few of you as we were able to uh, have the service here uh, for you on live stream, but I am thankful to see you in person today. And with that, and with the hope of us coming back to services, the hope of us being able to get together more often, more frequently this year, I thought it'd be appropriate to take a look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, and that's where we get that phrase, the assembling of ourselves. Hebrews 10, 25 says this, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. And so we're going to take a look at that, and we're going to... Uh, really understand who it is that's assembling. We're going to talk about why we're talking about not forsaking that assembly, what that means, that word, and then we're going to talk about again why it is. Once we know who it is that meeting uh, and that we shouldn't forsake it, talk about the benefits of that meeting together. So before I do that, uh, and I've already jumped ahead of myself, but I want to share with you or remind you here in person and at home about the phone call this evening, James chapter 3. 1 through 10. We're going through those, uh, that book of James uh, and lessons I'd be happy to preach Sunday morning. The very practical lessons for us as Christians. But James chapter 3, 1 through 10, and talking about taming the tongue. With that said, if you see those images on the screen, there'll be several images for you to take a look at today where we assembled together, where we got together and interacted with one another. If you see that image on the far left top corner, that is when we were down at the Midwest Children's Home. And so there were a few of us from Somerset that went down. There are a few from Norval Park, brothers and sisters in Christ, that went down there. And we did a lot of good works. We helped out the Children's Home. It was a great opportunity. But not only did we be outside, work, cut trees, do those type things during the day, but at night we come together We'd sing a few songs together, and then we'd have a short lesson from God's Word. And so, uh, really an opportunity for us to assemble, to gather together, come together, and take a moment out of our day, sing songs to teach one another, to encourage one another, sing songs to God, remind ourselves that we ought to humble ourselves, and then again be able to take a look to God's Word. It's a great opportunity. But not everyone were able to do that, and there's many things not everyone's able to do, but hopefully you're able to connect in some way. Hopefully you're able to assemble in some way, some fashion. If you look at the top middle picture there, that is, I believe, from the fall of 2017. Hannah and I came to Somerset in 2017, but in the fall, I believe we tried to do some kind of fall get-together, and we tried to have a hat competition. And so who could come up with the craziest hat, the silliest hat? There And so you can see, there's a few of us on the screen there, and you can see Jerry in that picture. Jerry won uh, the hat competition. Forget what he won, probably some chocolate, uh, which is all right. But it's a good time for us to be able to interact with one another, share our time with one another, to eat. I believe we had some food that evening. Then you look at the far right top corner. That's from a work day we had in 2019 where we had the uh, Development Disabilities Group from Perry County come out and help us. We got things painted. We got things cleaned up. Uh, there are some of you here to help with that day. 
And then you can see lastly, and perhaps you recognize that image, many of you were a part of that, when we had service outside by the fire. It didn't start that way. We were going to go out there after services, but one by one we kept meeting outside, and finally we said, well, let's take the psalm books out there. Well, let's go ahead and preach out there. Let's just meet outside. And it was a nice, beautiful day, as you can see from the image. We were assembling together, getting together. It's truly a wonderful thing. And hopefully you and I can appreciate it. Hopefully you and I can value that assembling of ourselves. So as I said, with uh, today's topic is the assembling of ourselves. And the three points we're going to look at. Who is it that is assembling? Who is it that is assembling? Then we're going to see from Hebrews 10.25 that we should not forsake that assembling, that gathering of one another. And then we're going to look also from Hebrews 10, but verse 24 and 25, why it is, what's the benefit of us assembling, getting together, being in each other's company, interacting with one another. I don't know if you've seen this image before, but this is from the second year we did the scavenger hunt. We went up to the earthworks there in Heath. And so again, there's a number of you that were, came out and helped with that. Many of you participated with that. For our, our kids and teenagers, just a, a good time for us to spend time with one another. That had to be on the first day of the week, and hopefully uh, with what we're talking about today, you'll understand that better. That we can assemble, we can gather together any day of the week, at any time. I understand that we are the church, and we're going to talk about that. And then, again, so we understand why. If you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. We're going to look at two verses on who it is that assembles, who it is that is the church, who, who comprises of the church. Now, you might notice, might recognize this individual on the screen. But let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 47. It says this. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. We've talked about, we've read the Bible, we've read God's word, looked at the New Testament. How it is that we're united with Christ. How it is that our sins are removed. That we're made clean from the removal of sins. And that's being baptized, being united with Christ. Thankfully, to Carla posting online, she had a picture from every month. And so Carla helped me uh, recognize just how long ago this was and tell me what month this was. Uh, but this was in September. And so truly a wonderful thing. And many of you here have had that moment, have had that day where you made that decision that you didn't want to live in sin and you didn't want to uh, be guilty for those things in your life, but yet you wanted those sins washed away. Yet you want to be united with Christ. You wanted to look to an eternal home, eternal life with God. Being united with your Creator and Savior. And so we're thankful for that decision that Bryce made. But we're thankful also for you for having made that choice. And what Acts 2.47 says, is those who are saved, in Acts 2.47, Jesus, sorry, God added those to the church. The church is comprised, made up of those who are saved. So, understanding that the church is saved people. Saved people. Myself, you, 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 you. We are the church. Ask yourself this question. Do you lose your salvation when you walk out those doors, those glass doors in the back, attached to this building? The answer is no. Because you have decided to follow Christ, you've decided to follow God, you decide to be faithful, obedient, to put your trust in God each and every day. Now you may have been baptized in this building, you may have been baptized somewhere else, may have been in a river, but you chose to have your sins washed away, to be united with Christ, to be united with God. So the church, while we may make the, the slip of the tongue, while we may come to think, and the world may think of the church being these four walls, thinking of it as the ceiling, thinking it ends at that doorway, we must understand that we are saved people every day of the week. Not just on the first day of the week, not just on Wednesdays for Bible study, but we have our salvation from God every day. So if that is the case, and if we are saved on Monday and Tuesday then we are the church 
on Monday and Tuesday. We're not perhaps gathering together, perhaps we go off to work, perhaps we're at home, but we're still saved people, and saved people is what makes up the church, is what the church is comprised of. So it is that we must behave, we must act like the church on Monday. We must behave and act like the church on Tuesday, taking care of one another and thinking about the lost. With that said, if you'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, another verse to point us to who it is that makes up the church, that compri- the church is comprised of. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Here you'll notice a photo from when we had to be at home in 2020. At home, we were gathering together. At home, you were all watching some kind of service. You were participating in service in home, singing songs with your family, of having prayers with your family. And so it was, we gathered in our home as well. But 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, it says this. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. I understand he addresses it to the church of God and tells us that the church of God and saints are the same people. That's who he is addressing. Called to be saints with all who in every place call in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. So Acts chapter 2 tells us that the church is saved people. 1 Corinthians tells us that the church are saints, people, individuals, and they coming together. That is what comprises of the church. Again, so you are a saint. I'm a saint. You are a saint. And we're not just saints in this building, uh, but yet we are saints. Yet we're to live our lives for God daily. If we are saved and a part of God's church, then we are saints. And just as the question was asked is if we lose our salvation when we walk out those doors, is it possible, is it true, that if we're separated, not in the same room, not in the same building, that we're no longer saints? That we're somehow no longer uh, supposed to be faithful, obedient unto God? The answer is no. Certainly, no matter where we are, whether at work, at home, outside this building, whether we call it the church property out there by the fire pit, or off the church property, but yet we are to be God's people, to be saints. And now understand this. The church is not like something you go to, like school. School is a building. School is in session for a time. And they take the summer off. But yet the church is something you are a part of, like a family. That even if you're separated by rooms, even if you're separated by state, you're still a part of that family. You are still that child. You are still that parent of someone. Even though you're separated by miles apart, while you you might not uh, get along, but you are still family. And so to understand that we in the church are like a family. And again, to understand the New Testament uses words to help us with that. That we are to call one another brothers and sisters in Christ. That we are the brethren together. And so, it's not something that we do. Church is not something we go to, something we are a part of for a few hours, but it is something that we are. We are the church belonging to God. We are the church belonging to Christ. And so it is our responsibility then to, again, take care of one another, to interact with one another, to reach out in different ways. And we've done that throughout this time. Even though we haven't met here Sunday evening, even though we haven't met here Wednesday night, we still, still have allowed for a time uh, of calling in for a Bible study. We still uh, have a way that we can connect to people. Many of you have, have a way through email, through phone calls. You can write letters to one another. And, and so, and I may say this later in the lesson as well, but I'm not preaching this lesson because I've perfected it, but I'm preaching this lesson because I need this as well. I need to remind myself about Hebrews 10.25. And that the assembling of ourselves, that we are the church, and it's just not in this building. That I can reach out to you Monday and Tuesday. That we can connect Monday and Tuesday. That if you're hurting throughout the week, that you don't have to wait till Sunday to let the church know. But we are the church each and every day. And so it is 
uh, of looking forward to that time where we can assemble together, where we can encourage one another, where we can uh, help one another. May we look forward to those times of getting together. If you turn to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25. That's going to help us with the second point about not forsaking the assembly. Bring up the point for today. Hebrews 10, 25. Hebrews 10, 25. It says this. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. There may be people you know who truly, over the years that you've attended here, that you've been a part of the church, there may be people you know that have truly forsaken the assembly. But why it's important for us to go over this and talk about this point is because we want to understand the word forsake. There have perhaps been people that have used this verse, perhaps even preachers that have used this verse, to when someone isn't here Sunday morning, they go read to them Hebrews 10.25, and say, ah, well, you weren't at service Sunday morning. You've forsaken us. You've abandoned us. Certainly, missing service can be the start of forsaking the assembly, can be a start to abandoning, deserting the church. But that is that in itself is not forsaking. You and I must understand that term better. To forsake means to abandon, desert, leave behind, leave and not return. So if you see that image of the teddy bear there, we don't see its owner in view of the camera. And so that teddy bear is just sitting outside there. What could be mud is left there. Whether it slipped out of the child's hand, whether it fell out of the car, but it has been abandoned. Perhaps you think about buildings you know that are considered forsaken buildings, that are abandoned buildings. It's not because the company took a week off of work, but it's because they no longer work there. They're completely empty. And so to understand that term, that we be cautious of that. And so, like I said, there may be people you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, who have truly forsaken the assembly. Hebrews 10.25 says, it is the manner of some to forsake the assembly. But may we understand and be patient with people uh, of when they're not at every event, when they're not here all the time. May we keep that contact with them to understand we are the church outside of meeting at 1030. We're the church outside of meeting on Wednesday night. We're the church outside of meeting Sunday evening. I look forward to all those occasions. I look forward to, again, coming back Sunday evening and having a song service. It's in those song services that we spend 45 minutes or more singing, looking at songs we haven't sang in a while, learning new songs that we may not know. They are joyous times. We need to really think about the words that we are singing. I look forward to those things. But we are the church and that exists outside of those things, and we must understand that. So hopefully, you and I can understand what it means to forsake. To forsake is to abandon, to leave behind, to leave, not return, to desert something. And may we be cautious of that, because we are the church. We are to be united with one another. We are to teach one another. We are to correct. We are to encourage one another. And that happens by us connecting with one another, by us assembling, getting together, and helping one another out. Now, if you would, if you're in Hebrews 10.25, just go back to verse 24. Hebrews 10.24. We're going to look at 24 and 25 to talk about why it is that we should assemble. We've discussed that who it is that is assembling. It's the saved that comprise of the church. It's the saints who comprise of the church. Talk about not forsaking that assembly. What's going to be the benefit if you remain a part of the assembly, if you continue to gather with one another? It says this. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Why is that we are to assemble? Why is that we're to take care of one another? To stir up love, to stir up good works amongst one another, and to encourage, exhort one another. We do that by connecting. Again, if you take a look at the images on the screen there, the top images from one of the team devotionals we had here in the basement 
Uh, and it is one of the occasions where Charlotte helped teach us how to make the unleavened bread. And so we had those things. I had a whole list. I don't know if it's still up. I may have taken it down. But for 2020, there's a whole list of each month, different things we were supposed to do with the youth group. We got maybe one or two of those things taken care of. Uh, and, and we look forward to in February going to CYC. But there were things that had to be pushed back, things that didn't get accomplished. Those opportunities. And while perhaps, again, we're not able to meet in person, we still have the capabilities. We have the technology to connect with one another, to reach out, pray for one another. And then if you can see that bottom image, and, and some of you may know what that's from, others may be confused, but that is the bags of food we had earlier in, in the spring of 2020. We decided to do uh, a food giveaway. And so many of you donated food for that. Some food was bought for that. And on Saturdays, a few of us came here and gave out food to some of the people in the community, those who really needed it. And even though it was a small gathering of us, it was still wonderful for us. Because while we saw each other on Saturday, we may not have got to see each other on Sunday for a few weeks. And so we assembled, we gathered together. It's important for us to connect, to talk to one another, encourage one another. And we can do that in many, many ways. And we can do that at many different times throughout the week. And hopefully, again, you understand that. Hopefully, I myself would understand that as well. Uh, uh, that we would be the church belonging to God. We'd be the church belonging to Christ. Ones who would be thoughtful and caring for one another. Those who would be concerned about the loss, not just on the first day of the week, but every day of the week. You and I would be concerned for those things. So we ought to assemble the reason why, the thing that ought to motivate us, is to stir up love with one another, stir up good works, because we're told in Scripture we are to know by our good works, not that people glorify us, but that they may glorify God. We know by our good works uh, to stir up good works amongst one another and to exhort one another, to encourage one another. How can you do that if you're separate? How is it, can you do that if you're not connected with each other? So it is. We must be uh, better at these things. Hopefully we can take that away from this morning's lesson. There you'll see the last image I have to share with you. And that is from the first year we did. We went to Lancaster. We went to Rising Park. And we did the scavenger hunt there. Again, many of you came out to help with that, as you can see in the picture. Many of you participated in that. And it was a great opportunity for us. No, it wasn't the first day of the week. No, it wasn't Wednesday night Bible study. But we had some good weather. We could go out in public, meet together. And afterwards, we went to Pizza Hut and had pizza together. We enjoyed each other's company. We got along like a family. We were able to see ourselves as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so how wonderful of a thing that is. So it is that I remind you of these things today. Who is it that assembles? When talking about the assembling of ourselves, who is it? It's the church, which is saved people, which are saints, belonging to God, those who call upon Jesus, those who are faithful and obedient to him. They are to assemble. It is those people who ought not to forsake the assembling, while they may see the examples of others and those who go astray do such things, they ought to avoid such activity because the reason for the assembling, the why, the motivation to gather together is that we'd stir up love, we'd stir up good works with one another, and that we'd exhort one another. We'd be able to encourage one another. And so maybe we'd be able to do that. Hebrews 10, 25 24 and 25 are just two verses, but from that, may we understand what it is to assemble. I can't tell you today, I don't have a message at the end of the lesson to tell you, coming February, we'll be back for Wednesday night Bible study. I can't tell you when we'll come back for Sunday evening song service. I can tell you I look forward to it. I can tell you that I look forward to us gathering together, assembling with one another. Perhaps you've heard today's lesson and perhaps you've realized that you are someone who, who hasn't been motivated to assemble. You're someone who hasn't seen the importance in it, but have realized you need to understand that importance, that you are someone who wants to be better at that. If we, as your brother or your sister in Christ, if we can pray for you and with you, encourage you in that way, then please let us know. Perhaps 
you're someone here today and someone who isn't a part of the family of Christ. Perhaps you're someone who can't call themselves saved, someone who can't call themselves a saint. But today you have the opportunity to repent of your sins, to confess Jesus as the Christ, and to be united with him in baptism. Truly a wonderful occasion. Again, many of us have made that decision. We're thankful for all that have made that decision. But if that's you today, if we can help you, we ask that you come forward as a stand scene, the invitation song. Have I long way? privilege and the opportunity that you've given us to assemble together in this manner. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for our sins. Help us in like manner to be as forgiving with others, not holding a grudge or not wanting revenge, but having that attitude of forgiveness in our mind at all times, ready and willing to forgive, and ready at any given time, Father, to offer a prayer for whatever the situation may be. We thank you for being able to assemble here this morning for each and every person that's here. We ask that you bless them throughout the day. Bless all of us, Father, that we may do your will in word, thought, or deed. We thank you and pray for those who are traveling today, that you'll be with them, watch over them, and keep them safe. We ask you now to be with those who may have suffered the loss of a loved one. We pray, Father, that that loved one was a member of the body of Christ, but if not, then your will be done. We ask you to go with us as we leave this place of worship today. Watch over us and care for us. Keep us in your way, Lord, in all that we think, say, or do. And this is our prayer in the name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And amen. Amen. You may be seated, please. <clears throat> I have a few announcements to make. Uh, if you didn't pick up uh, a newsletter, please uh, get one of those on your way out. And I tried to get with just about everybody. I, I know I miss Carla uh, signing a, a letter of appreciation for the donation that we was that we've received. And just in case you missed that thought or that that information, uh, the William Belleville family uh, sent a donation in memory of their parents who attended here some 40 plus years ago. And uh, we really uh, wrestled with, is this real? Is this directed to the right place? And after a lot of verification, we found that it was. 
uh, directed to the Somerset Church of Christ within the amount of $20,000. So we certainly appreciate that and make sure it goes to good use. But we um, have a, a letter of appreciation that uh, I've asked people to sign. If I didn't uh, uh, get with you, I'll get with you right after church, right after we're dismissed uh, here this morning. Uh, I got a, a text from Teresa this morning that her father had been taken into Genesis Hospital and he's, he's been diagnosed with acute heart failure. So I'd ask you to keep uh, that family in your prayers as well. Um, I'd also uh, mention that Jim's daughter, Jim Large's daughter, has been diagnosed as being terminal. So please keep Jim and family uh, in your prayers as well. Sue, what about Larry? You got an update on him? Okay, for the benefit of those at home that may not have been able to hear that, uh, Larry will be in the hospital for uh, maybe a month, did you say? Uh, he'll, be in a, he'll be in another facility. Another facility for uh, approximately a month. Yeah, he'll, he'll, they'll release him from the hospital Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, as soon as we get everything straightened out. Okay, he'll and be... I also wanted to, I know some people here probably know David Newberry. Yes. David Newberry is pretty bad. Oh. And he's having trouble walking. Right, Mike. He can, and then Bobby and Rita Cameron, Jeremy and I went down there this week, and Michael and they have three, Mike has uh, had a passed away of a massive heart attack, and they have three girls. And uh, that family is still just really, really destroyed over losing her. Okay. Let me repeat that for the benefit of the folks at home. Mike Bliss uh, lost his wife due to a heart attack uh, recently. I think they're from the Parkersburg area. Yes. David Newberry, uh, whom uh, we've served at church camp with him and known him for a lot of years. His cancer has returned and not doing well uh, with that. And Larry will be in a step-down unit for a period of time, uh, possibly around Columbus. Don't know that for sure yet, but possibly. Um, I'd also mention that um, there are a box of ties on the back uh, table there that if anybody would like to have a tie, uh, Scott brought some back and I added to it. <laughs> so there's a, quite, a, quite a bucket of ties back there. So if you want some of those ties, please help yourself. Otherwise, they'll be taken to the uh, School of Preaching. Um, remember the phone call tonight at 6 o'clock uh, over James chapter 3, the first 10 verses. Look forward to that uh, uh, coming uh, together again at 6. And I just want to thank Scott for the message this morning of, of the, the need for being together. Because certainly we miss each other. Even though that we're still limited in number, we appreciate those that are here and understand those that are still at home uh, that uh, are unable to be here. So we appreciate all of that anyway. Um, are there other announcements that need to be made? Yes, Mike. I think it's the first opportunity the Hills have been able to be here since they placed membership with us several weeks ago. Um, I want to welcome them to the congregation. Also, Lonnie's niece, Amanda, and her family are having going through some real challenges right now. And, uh, they worship at Shawnee, and I uh, really appreciate the prayers for, for strength for them. They're uh, okay. Okay, uh, again, again, for the benefit of those people at home, uh, Andy and Sarah Hill placed her membership with us, and we we're certainly happy of, about that. And it's good to see them back. It's good to see Janice and Brooke back after battling with COVID as well. Uh, Al doing okay, and Austin doing okay? Yeah. They're doing fine, good. Chris, you had something. Um, I think um, our preacher's wife. <laughs> 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 Sarah Hill is 
senior moment. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, the, the candy baskets that, uh, that uh, Kathy Reynolds had prepared are on the back table uh, in the foyer. Uh, so if you didn't get one of those, please pick it up and uh, uh, get that moved, lest I overeat on chocolate. Yes, Scott. Uh, two things. One, uh, tro printout, uh, trivia this week. So if you don't have that, please pick one up. Uh, and then if I have to, uh, you all are evaluating tomorrow and you would like people's comments and feedback. Yes. So. Yes. Tomorrow tomorrow morning we're going to rake him across the coals. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just an annual review. Uh, nothing. Uh, there should never be a surprise in an annual review. I, I've done those for many years on my job and I always told my direct reports, I said, if there's, if there's a surprise, then I'm not doing my job correctly through the year. So there aren't any surprises coming, just a matter of time sitting down and talking about where we are and where we want to be. But if you have comments uh, that you'd like us to, to share with him, uh, please let us know. But that's tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock, we're going to be doing that. We're also going to be reviewing the web page that Kyle put together for us uh, and uh, uh, get that moving. Uh, and then the 18th at 7 o'clock here at the building, Lord willing, we're planning on having a budget meeting. And anybody that wants to attend that is welcome as we look to this year and where we uh, would uh, like to set our budget. So uh, anything else that needs to be announced? If not, you are dismissed.